for you to fold you in, had you been involved in this very early round of conversations, or when did you first know about the movie and know that it was something that might be entering your universe? I can't remember. When, when was that? You, you gave me a script over we lunch. Had, we had a lunch before I went out to shoot, um, and, uh, and we talked about the film. You'd read the script, and we talked about the film, and then... Uh, but then I, I didn't hire you right away. I went away and made the film. I shot the film and then got back and I was like, I need a, a, a composer. <laughs> and and it was literally, I got back to editing and called you up and we uh, we started working on it. But at that lunch, you had, we, there were some preliminary ideas that Jason had had, which didn't turn really into what happened. It's true. It was, I was completely wrong. Well, uh, talk, us, talk to us about what your, your instinct was, what were you thinking musically? I thought the I thought the entire because I remember this is what was the lunch was about. I said the I wrote the movie listening to Hank Williams. I'm not sure if you're the same way, John, but uh, when I write, I need to have particular songs that get me in the mood for that character. Yeah, and the touchstones that remind you sort of what that feels like. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, I mean, look, you're you're as a storyteller, what you're doing is you're creating tone. I mean, that's kind of the most important thing. And if you can get the tone right, then everything else oddly will kind of fall into place. You know, the dialogue can go a little left, a little right, but if the tone is right, then you're 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 right there. So you need the music that gets you in the tone, and the music for this movie was Hank Williams. I would just listen to Hank Williams incessantly, and particularly the song Ramblin' Man was the song that got me through this movie. And I remember I sat down and I said, all right, look, the whole movie's gonna be Hank Williams. And uh, I, I did, I, what I need you to do is really just just rewrite Hank Williams without singing in it, and that'll be the score. And uh, yeah, and I was music like, music editor, not really a, a score. Yeah, and I was and I was like, I don't want you to be. I remember saying, I don't want you to be offended by this. Um, so, and I would understand if you felt like I'm not going to write this. I'm a composer. I'm not going to sit here and just rewrite, you know, Hank Williams without vocals in it. And um, <laughs> uh, and we had a conversation about that, and then we got into editing. And very early, you started to write music, but almost immediately, we we realized that Hank Williams wasn't working <laughs> anywhere. Um, Do you remember which uh, what scene we actually put the first Hank Williams? Well, there was a, it was it played over the it, the same thing happened on Thank You for Smoking, frankly, <laughs> and on Juno. On Thank You for Smoking, I thought it was going to be all the Swingle Singers, which is this uh, French a cappella jazz group from the '60s, and um, and Juno was going to be Yola Tango, like start to finish. <laughs> and there's no Yola Tango in Juno. There's one Swingle Singer song in Thank You for Smoking. Uh, I, I just clearly have bad instincts when it comes to music. Was it bad instincts or did it burn out in your head? I mean, that's the, the situation I found No, sometimes. no, they're wrong. They uh, actually were just wrong. You know, I mean, you know what it is, John? I'll tell you exactly what it is. is when you're writing, uh, when I'm writing, I am trying to set the tone with that song, and then I'm writing to it. But once I've made a movie, once I've shot a film, and we've gone over all these decisions between everybody, um, the tone has now been set by everything else. Uh, the, the tone that I was trying to set through uh, Hank Williams has now been set through all these other things. And now it's Rolf's job to actually build something on top of that and um, add something that it, that makes the film more resonant and makes it more thoughtful uh, because I've hopefully already set a lot of the tone that it would have been redundant to have Hank Williams on top of what I was already doing. Um, do you want to talk at all about Rolf? Because I think this is, this, one, this is one of the best cues in the mo uh, movie and in my opinion, one of the best cues you've ever written. Uh, I think it's, uh, no, it's a stunning uh, cue and it's, it's, it's actually one of those pieces that you think exists out there, a great percussion piece like this that uses all sorts of unusual foreign instruments and moves characters along, the kind of thing that you're like, oh, I just need some temp music. Let me go some, find some drums. And let me tell you, I've looked for that stuff. It doesn't exist. And I got to actually watch you kind of create this in person. And uh, I was wondering if you want to kind of speak to that at all. No? Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, but, well, then it was all me. Um, really? well, that was, but that was very much just a case of... Well, you, you, had, a, you had a concept as to what you wanted. You, you, you knew that you liked the idea of interesting percussion, so I started picking up things and hitting things. And, uh, <laughs> was, but, but that was basically it, wasn't it? That, that we found sounds that you liked, and 
I, I can't remember how much of it I did. I did some of it with you in the room, and then and then went and molded it, and then you came back and had me <laughs> fix it. But uh, but yeah, it was a lot of it was a lot of uh, it, it was it was a, 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 unusual for me because I do most of my writing alone, and then show you what I've done. But that was one where we started playing around with rhythms and instruments, and uh, finding finding what it is you were responding to, and then and then and then I went and worked on it afterwards. But it was, yeah, it was. It was really interesting. It's interesting to do something which is so minimal, basically. I mean, there is pizzicato orchestra in there at moments, but essentially it's percussion. And um, actually, I remember. Do you remember when we were talking about you? You, you weren't. You didn't really think an orchestra had a place in this film. Mm -hmm. And I said, "But you like the pizzicato, right?" And you go, "Yeah." I go, "That is an orchestra, you know. That's, <laughs> that, that requires an orchestra to do that." And you went, "Oh yeah, it's an orchestra." <laughs> But yeah, essentially that's yeah. It was an interesting one, it's, and it's, you're right. It turned out really well. I know you think you, you think it's going to be tempted into every other film that ever. I'm telling you, know, for, you for this about is going to be one of your most play that and the harp cue um, uh, are going to be tempt uh, a lot. I mean, I, one of the reasons that I think we are kind of a, uh, a good creative pairing is that. Uh, I mean, what you just said about trying to say as much as you can was uh, so little. Uh, we using just those uh, sparing uh, pizzicato sections is it's exactly what I look for in music, is music that can make you feel something without you knowing that it's kind of getting at you. And too often, uh, movie music is so arch and so overreaching, and it's so obvious in what it's trying to make you feel. And Rolf is like a ninja, you know? He, he, he gets you to feel that, and you're not even aware of his presence sometimes, and he's getting you to do that. I mean, um, I, certainly when I went to make Thank You for Smoking, uh, and I began to think about who's going to write the music. The question is, well, who writes for Alexander Payne? Because whoever writes for Alexander Payne is the best, you know, is the best composer on earth and, and knows how to do this. And I looked it up, and it was Rolf Kent. And that's kind of was the beginning of our, our working relationship. And this kind of speaks to that idea exactly of the ways that you used just tiny pieces of orchestra throughout the film. Um, I'm just enjoying being referred to as a ninja. <laughs> All black, but but it's it's interesting. You know, there's a cue in the film which is uh, it's really just harp, and uh, but it wasn't. It was originally harp, basu uh, harp, clarinet, and ukulele, I think. And this is the thing. You know, the ninja comes in and he kills somebody three different ways, and and then the master comes in and goes, "You, you only need to kill him once." And you go, "Oh, just the <laughs> once." It's very generous. So so yeah. So Jason comes in and says, "Okay, try it without the ukulele," and oh, and without the clarinet. And I go, that's just a harp. That's all that's left is harp. And that's what we have. I mean, it's beautiful. It's exactly what it needed to be. But I love that you were the only guy who says, I think this cue should have harp, ukulele, and clarinet. <laughs>